Hey guys, Absolute 5 here. Um, today, in this beautiful weather today, I was thinking about back when I was younger, I always wondered how was college like going from high school? Now, a lot of people might tell you that if you're a high school student, that it's hard, it's not easy, or some people might say, ah, it's easy, it's nothing, don't worry about it, right? Understand this, that those people who tell you these things, if they're not in college already, don't listen to them. That's the first thing. Don't listen to them because if they're not in college, they can't give you an honest feedback, obviously. Now, if they are telling you it is hard, ask them what subject are they doing? What are they majoring? What are they, what are they doing with themselves? How are they studying? So the idea, the name of the video obviously is their mentality from high school mentality to college mentality and how do I transition between the two? Mainly, mainly it's somewhat, it's somewhat difficult. You know why? I can only speak from my experience of having a local college experience. I can't tell you what a dorm experience is like. I wanted a dorm experience because it would have taught me so much experience about how, to, how, I, how I really am as a person. Am I a spiteful person? Am I a grateful person? If I would have dorm with somebody or not? It depends on how somebody was, you know, more or less raised. Now, high school mentality was different from my experience and that's the best thing I could talk about is from my experience so I felt first first off I felt that high school eh, it was somewhat hard besides getting bullied that has happened to everybody but I would say the fear honestly my biggest fear when I was in high school going to college was trying to get into the college I wanted to get into now that's huge for a lot of students because a lot of you guys you work your tail off just to get these good grades to study for these SATs to make sure your GPA or your grade point average is spot on perfect and and it sucks sometimes you just don't get picked and it's unfortunate that happens and that's like one of one of one of students' biggest fears is to fail at not getting to the school that they wanted to go in. And the thing is, it's hard to accept it because at first, I wanted to go to Queens College at first. But then I was zoned to go to Medgar Evers College. And when I first heard of that, I was like, Who, what is Medgar? Like, what is this place? Like, I have no idea. And it's in Brooklyn. Now, granted, I was very ignorant. Very ignorant. And yes, I will admit that I had some issues in that neighborhood yes I will admit that however after going to Medgar and I actually learned their culture learned their environment took time to understand who Medgar ever was I fell in love with that place like just that ignorant side of me just vanished it's gone <laughs> it's gone seriously I I am a huge huge candidate well not candidate I'm a huge I'm a huge person of I'm a huge fan of Medgar that's what I'm trying to say I'm a huge fan of Medgar Evers College because of how the people they treat you how the, how the people treat you the professors some of the professors are very spot-on they will be there for you no matter what and that overall the Ooh. faculty overall there is just just spot-on nice overall fantastic even but I'm not trying to just praise Medgars. The idea is, how do you transition mentality from high school to, to college mentality? So the first step is you have to accept the fact that whatever college you get into, you have to accept whatever, which one of your, whichever college you get into, you have to accept that one. I would say number two would be learn more, have a bigger vocabulary. Because the thing is, let's be honest here, a lot of us, we tend to we tend to just say oh certain things like this and that or maybe even like 
say like that's one bad habit I have. I keep saying the word like, like, um, if, and. Those are bad habits that I eventually will work on that I won't hopefully say anymore. However, the thing is you want to steadily grow your vocabulary because some professors are very, I'll admit it, they're stuck up, they are, they have this eagle that's the size of a planet and if you're not some some professors if you're not if you're not speaking at their in, intellect more or less more or less they won't even acknowledge you as, as as a person that's why it comes with maturity for you to learn bigger words and learn how to use them and how to communicate and express your thought that's another thing that i don't think high school teaches our students enough is to how to express how you feel about things is very important because a lot of students they feel as if they should know everything and that's a problem a lot of people shouldn't feel like they should know everything because well they just started high school they just started college how do you expect a student to know everything of course i know there's freshman orientation but that's just this is this is the surface of of college it's not like oh that's everything that's all you need to know there there see that's the thing there's there's scholarships that people don't tell you about there's programs that you can do internships there's study abroad you can do there's a whole bunch of other options you can do the thing is you have to talk and the thing is a lot of students they're very shy they don't especially this generation of uh, when i say this generation i'm just talking about the people who are heavily on the phones and tablets and these other technology things everyone likes to be everyone wants to be uh only social media and not really confrontational one-on-one -on -one talking to someone face to face i would gladly talk to anybody face to face issue is is that a lot of students they are very they're afraid to talk they're afraid to talk and speak their minds and ask questions and that i'm a huge advocate for people to speak them especially for students to speak their minds and ask hey what does this mean hey where can i get this or you know so and so and the thing and the thing is you're supposed to have these questions the thing is some people they feel like oh uh, you should know this i don't really have the time to explain myself these things of course of course there's always there's always that barrier that you have to try to conquer when that happens now What's the next step? What's the next mentality that you have to transition? Being independent. Now, this is hard. Some people, again, I didn't have the experience to tell you what's it like to dorm. If I did, I would love to tell you that, but I don't, I can't say I do know, I don't know. I actually was fortunate enough that Medgar was in Brooklyn and I, live in, and I lived near New York. Some part of Queens. So, ideally, ideally at the time, when I was living there, at the time, I, would, I, had the, I had the ability to travel conveniently, in a sense, to go back and forth from Brooklyn and to my home. Some people, and the thing is, some people, they're, they're, gonna, they're going to dorm, maybe in another state, maybe in even another country, and they have to be independent, take responsibility for their education, their time, their work, you know, just overall them, their own lives. And it's very hard. I can only imagine how hard it is to be in another country, learn their language, and do the work. Like, I can't even imagine, comprehend that because I've never done that before. And if I did, I don't, that would truly be a huge test of how how well can i adapt to how well can i adapt to a different environment but i would just say that my advice for people who have to dorm take it one step at a time you're going to get homesick you're going to miss people and that's about it i can say I, that's that's just what i can imagine anyway and that you can do it if you still believe in yourself then that's all that matters if you can just believe in yourself that you're able to you're able to really 
just push yourself. And if you really want this, if you really are serious about your education, you will do anything, okay? You will do anything to pass those courses and to adapt, okay? Now, I'm not trying to scare a lot of high schoolers from college. College, it's really, another thing I would say for college, it's like my last video, don't procrastinate. That's so important not to procrastinate any new things. But I would say, not to talk too much about that, because I said that last time. The next step I would say, probably the fourth step I believe, is to make friends. Make friends as much as possible. Now I'm not talking about going to a club, getting these people's numbers, you know, whatever. You're not supposed to get those people's numbers just to fool around all the time. No, there, are, there is a time and place to fool around here and there, yes. But in the beginning, the people you meet is so important that you really, really should first talk to as many people as possible because you're going to need a lot of friends. Because, hey, you never know. You might first tell yourself, I want to be a nursing major, maybe a biology major, maybe even an English major or, God forbid, you say a math major, but it's okay. You could be a math major too. Just be, be just like me. And... And you might end up changing majors. You might you might not stick with one major. You might end up going to computer science, then go to liberal arts, and then go to psychology, and then finally you might end up being a music teacher. <laughs> like, that's the thing. You have to really, this phase of your life, you have to experiment as much as possible with these different types of fields. And the only thing is, the only way you're going to really know about these other fields is if you start talking to other people, like not just friends, not just other colleagues, but the faculty themselves. Ask them what's their experience like. How was it for you to grow as a student or even as a before you became a professor? How did you really what did you have to do to excuse me, to grow as a person? And they'll tell you if they're open about it, they'll tell you about what how the experience was like. Now, the last advice I would say to transition mentality from, from high school to college, well, it's simply in the title. It's not high school anymore. <laughs> You're in a different environment completely. It's everything is on you, meaning you have to take charge of your, of your work, meaning High school, they spoon feed you the information, they spoon feed you homework, they spoon feed you everything. Some professors in college, they may not even give you any homework, but you're still expected to study, yes? That's the thing. You may not want to accept that type of responsibility. And it's hard. It's really hard because you have to take charge in everything. You have to take charge in studying, taking these finals, passing these stuff, scheduling your own schedule. That's something I'll probably talk about in another video about time management. But understand that it takes so much work to just manage your own schedule that, you know, this is, this is, this is not high school where everything is, oh, you're going to take this, you're going to take that. No, it's none of that. You have to tell yourself, what do you want this semester? How hard do you want to work? And let alone how fast you want to complete your bachelor's degree or even your associate's degree. I say bachelor's because I feel it's associate's is not, not, is nothing, it's a joke. So those are my five tips, I believe, how to transition from high school mentality to college mentality. It's not easy. And I know I grew up in a different era, and and I know that I can only speak for myself, from my own experiences, that that's what I went through in a sense. But I mean, please leave a comment about your own experience now, like high school students now. Please educate me on what's your experience like now, transitioning from high school to college. I need to know. I need to become a better. I need to learn so I can become a better person and to really educate myself, to educate even other students what's going on. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. 
hit the little bell button if you want to know more notifications from me. And this has been Absolute 5. I'm Roger Palomino. And, and math is infinite because there are infinitely many poss there are infinitely many possibilities. And that I want you all to have an absolutely lovely day. Take care.